Yes, hello, my name is Sandeep Bhagwati. I'm uh, from Concordia University. <coughs> and I'm currently, all the, all the talks up to now have been about past projects, so I'm going to talk about the future project. I'm just, just embarking on. Um, and you can see the first kind of vision sketches that have been made. There's nothing real behind this. Um, I would start off by just talking about briefly about the, the specific definition of compromisation. It's a term that's been around a lot. Uh, for me, it means uh, creation in time-based artists. It's really predicated on the interplay between context-independent scores and context-contingent context performance elements, so that, there's, that the aesthetical value or the aesthetical interest of this piece is about these things. That's a compromisation. So the, the context independent score could be anything, any instruction, anything. It could be even in, a, in an improvising band, it could be the, the fact that it's always the same players. That's already a score, albeit a very non-visual one. Um, uh, we usually, when we talk about scores, we think of visual scores and we have all, we've seen many examples today and there's a little classic taxonomy of, of these, very small taxonomy. Uh, I've been increasingly thinking about other ways of having scores. Of course, the memory <coughs> score is one that's been around before the paper score, but before the real score. Audio scores and tactile proprioceptic scores are things that I would like to explore and have explored. Uh, Dominic said, when I said, uh, it's, it's just, I'm just talking about um, hot air right now, it's not a tangible project. He said, you can talk about past projects. I'm going to run through a, a few of them. Sorry, my computer is very slow today. So this is a typical rolling score. It's a fixed composition. You can see that this line that's here as next, and the next page already is the now, and so on. Very simple. A variation of this is that you have a similar setup, but every time you read through, the tops change. So when you go back to the top, it's already changed, and it's generated. It's, it's sort of picked out of a reservoir of different um, things, so you never know what you're going to get uh, as a performer. It's already uh, yeah, it's situation dependent, and it could be random. It could be, uh, of course, algorithmic. In this case, it's random. In the next case, it's algorithmic. It's a different kind of, I like the, the concept of, t of time structure, so this is a very different time structure in the score. <coughs> where you, like in a bento box, Japanese dinner box, <laughs> you assemble your uh, score from these elements and they change uh, according to different parameters, according to different um, algorithms throughout the piece. Um, this is an animated score. We can, can again see the next page, the present page. You have a number of instructions. And right now they're all in parallel, but I will still go on. Um, so you have all kinds of elements that enter into the score page, and they're sometimes generated randomly, sometimes they're generated by inter interaction from, uh, by, by input from the musicians playing. So it's a very uh, Catholic score. So it uses all these kinds of elements in, in different mixtures according to the feasibility or the artistic intention. Um, similar in this case, where you have a kind of long um, timeline on the top, and then you have different elements that are somehow correlated to the timeline in a way that, that varies with each page. <coughs> and so the musicians have this timeline, and it's, they know what to look at here. In this case, the entire timeline is playing. It's red, but it's uh, in certain other timelines, you will see it immediately you see breaks where they're not playing, where they're playing, and so they have things that they have to play at all times and things that they have to play sometimes. So there's a lot of memory score in that. Um, they need to understand and understand the score, but when while playing, they also have to react to these different pages because it's all generated. Um, this is another piece for improvised in life, generated compromisation by computers using <coughs> OMAX-based <coughs> extension, extensions on OMAX, Ericum OMAX. 
And here you have a composition that's sort of the starting point. And the musician plays this and it's analyzed live. And this an analysis generates then memories of, um, of, of what the musician played, improvised on mm -hmm. that. It, it starts off the musician, fires off the musician. Um, the musician then continues to improvise in that manner or prompted by the starter, C. Um, and, uh, and then the results are fed back to him. These change in many ways. You have different display modes. Um, and so the musician has many choices that they, can, that they can follow up and thereby create an architecture over the duration of one hour. So it's a one hour performance piece. We performed many times <coughs> in very, with, the, with very different musicians. So this is very specific for trombone right now. But each time I write a new version, it's essentially I don't only change this thing. Everything else will be generated live. There's a huge live electronics component, which I won't go into because we're talking about scores. Um, and of course, there's a lot of information for the musician that's purely organizational timelines and that kind of thing. Um, it's probably too small for everyone to see. So just as a kind of, um, we, have a, we have a score <coughs> part, which is sort of how the score is generated. And, we have, and it's, it's a mixture of pre-compositional information, dramaturgical informations that are already pre-composed, uh, but in a very general way that's allowed for a lot of leeway. And then they're, imp they're sort of implemented both by the musician. So the musician can say, I want to progress to the next thing. Or the system says, well, no, let's try something new. And we have lots of you know, your usual quantization, segmentation, and all the little um, anal analytical tools that had happened to create these little fragments that remind us, that create an, an improvisation architecture that reminds the listener and the musician, again, of things that have already been passed, which is always very difficult in normal improvisation to really get that back. And so th it's constantly there as a reminder for the musician, and if he takes it up, the listener, again, experiences a kind of uh, memory uh, event in following the score. Um, but I've been increasingly interested in other kinds of scores that are not on paper, and I'll presently say why. So just one thing, for example, an audio score, you can see a musician here. Oh, you can see musicians here. Uh, they have masks, and they have headphones. It's probably a little hard to see. Here you can see headphones. So they have, they have a paper score. And in the paper score, there are passages where they're instructed to listen to the headphones. There's all kinds of information on the headphones, both spoken and musical information. So uh, it's also playing with this kind of idea that an improvising ensemble always listens to each other. In this case, they sometimes listen to things other than the co-musicians and introduce that knowledge into the, or that, that experience into the common m music making. Um, carry this a little further. Um, this is a fixed score. And it's only, of course, that's all you can now can see. There's only audio score information. They only have headphones. Um, and they walk around in space. And this is a fixed score, but it could easily be a generated score or anything you like. Um, why I'm interested in this is because I'm increasingly interested in different kinds of interaction with the audience. So you have a typical orchestra situation, but you also have the typical street performance. During fluxes, less now, but during fluxes time, there was lots of interest in ambulatory concerts where the, you had stations and then audiences would walk, or musicians would walk through the audience. Both are possible variants. And I'm interested increasingly in pieces where everybody walks and everybody is active and walks around and you never know what happens. <coughs> of course, as an improvisation, this is easily made. You can do this easily. I'm interested in having this as a compositional proposition, as a something that still has the, the benefits of coordination, of you know, 
dramaturgy and all these kind of things that, that you have in a traditional well, concert score, but expand it to this kind of venue. Um, Non-visual <coughs> scores are interesting to me, partly because, as you can see now, I'm glued to my screen when I'm talking. And musicians are even more glued as their scores get more animated. An animated score glues the musician to the page, and that's something that I theatrically find, well, it's interesting in some way, but it has a certain message. It says, uh, messages from above are being sent to me, and I'm executing them. Which is not always the message you want to have in a, th in a, in a concert. Um, musicians also can hardly move. It's very difficult. Well, we're going to try with head up this place, Google Glass or something like that. Um, but I doubt that it's really a solution. We'll see. Um, and um, I just li would like to add the creative and aesthetic options to score driven musicking that are possible by not having somebody look at something by having somebody look at somebody else or at <coughs> the world in general and derive information from them. So um, I'm going to skip. You can see one of this, these scores where musicians move to the city. I'm not going to talk about it because I'm up for time. Um, and I don't know why my computer blocks. OK. So what I'm going to explore over the next four years, we just got a grant, are um, uh, bodysuit scores. Again, this is just a concept, as they would call it in car design. It's a concept suit um, of what it could look like. What we want to do are scores that are embedded in clothes, um, where musicians get all necessary information through their clothes. Um, and the question always, well, the question for the grant was, could listening be to music become as engaging an activity as swimming with dolphins or running through a storm as exploring a sprawling cave? So a very active way of listening to music that is also very active in itself. Um, and as I said, it's, it's a four, major four-year grant. Four Montreal labs are collaborating. Montreal Lab, which is my lab, Access Lab. Uh, Julie Brzozowska is the clothing person. She designs embedded computed computing textiles. Um, ITMIL, the interface design the music information lab by Marcelo Wanderley, and the music performance and body lab by Isabel Cosette, run by Isabel Cosette. So these four labs are collaborating together with the game designing lab because one of the effects factors is uh, learning games. So m the bodysuit score wants to wants the musician to receive coded information. And that could be both uh, analog information, like flowing information, or symbolic information, like in the traditional score. Uh, sent involuntary body and location information, so sensor information. Sent voluntary and score information, like messages and receive involuntary <coughs> body and location information from the other musician. So that's what the score should achieve. Coordination possibilities are uh, open. They, they open up a lot of coordination possibilities. Uh, just think of that in, if you have location information in a complex space, you could actually uh, redesign simultaneity because of you know, if you want to concentrate simultaneity on a certain location and not on another, so that people in one location have a simultaneous event and in another they don't. That's what you could code with this kind of um, information. Um, the bodysuit score will be uh, developed in four streams that are working simultaneously. We're always uh, working together, we're trying to work together. Uh, one, there are two important facts. I mean, the prototype, obviously, we need prototypes. Um, we need ergonomic design, meaning does it work? Does, does the musician actually receive the information? Is it, is it hampering them or not? Is it helping them? Um, and we need learning games so that, the, that we don't have a manual that the musician has to learn to, to know what kind of uh, information does this buzz on my knee mean? Um, so these are all 
part of the development part, and then we have the composition attitudes and the aesthetic evaluation. The reason why I also wanted to give this talk is to get people interested as composers and perhaps as aesthetic evaluators to connect with us and perhaps be part of this project because the more people have ideas about what one can do with this work, the more interesting the design options get. And um, so that's my final call. Thank you very much.